welcome to the start. It is going to be, I trust, a really wonderful year. I'm looking forward to our time together. And uh, I welcome you into a learning community. That's really what FCS is. Over the course of years, uh, people have asked me to try and describe just what it is that makes FCS distinctive. And while we do have a distinctive curriculum, we love the great books, the living uh, works of art, uh, we want to expose our students to the best things that have ever been written and the best music that has ever been composed and the best art that has ever been executed and the best buildings that have ever been erected and the best uh, scientific developments that have ever been forged by the minds of men, the most glorious demonstrations of the flowering of human creativity. And that's all true. Uh, but a lot of schools love the excellent things and the good things. But we also have, uh, have very intentionally remained small. Uh, that, that, that is a part of our mission. So that we actually know each other, so that teachers and students know each other, so that, so that the younger students actually know the older students, and the older students actually know the younger students. But of course, there are other small schools as well. Most of them, not by their own choice necessarily, but, uh, but then there are lots of smaller schools around as well. What I think most sets FCS apart is the fact that the whole vision of FCS is discipleship. Moving students along so that they begin to exercise that rare and strange commodity called discernment. So they might exercise discretion in whatever their areas of calling might be. G.K. Chesterton, a great English writer of the last generation said, the great intellectual tradition that comes down to us from the past was never interrupted or lost through such trifles as the sack of Rome, the triumph of Attila, or all the barbarian invasions of the Dark Ages. It was lost after the introduction of printing, the discovery of America, the coming of the marvels of technology, the establishment of universal education, and all the enlightenment of the modern world. It was there, if anywhere, that there was lost, or impatiently snapped, that long, thin, delicate thread that had descended from a distant antiquity, the thread of that unusual human hobby, the habit of thinking. We want our students to actually Think. We don't think that an education is simply a trade school in disguise. No, we're not fitting our students simply for the marketplace. We want them to be fitted by God's calling and God's destiny for all of life, for decision making and for the discernment of the most difficult decisions that they will make. And those decisions rarely have to do with their investment portfolio. Not that that is excluded. It's just that it oftentimes is put so much to the forefront that everything else is lost. So what that means ultimately is that your teachers, the mentors and disciples of your students, have to be just as engaged in the process of learning as the students are making us genuinely a community of learning. Recently, I've been working with a, a group of young men uh, who are all preparing for one form or another of, of ongoing ministry. And uh, we've been reading together a wonderful book by Richard Baxter, the great uh, 17th century Puritan, uh, who wrote on pastoral ministry. This is what he said about pastors. It is a sad thing that so many of us preach our hearers asleep. But it is sadder 
if we have studied and preached ourselves asleep and have talked so long against uh, their hardness of heart that our own have grown hardened under the noise of our own reproofs. What Baxter touches on is something that I think all of us can relate to, and that is that it's a dangerous thing to pretend to be the teacher if we're not willing to be taught ourselves. It's a dangerous thing to stand in front of a group of, of eager learners if we ourselves are not eager learners. And so one of the things that we really nurture at FCS is an environment where, where the teachers don't have all the answers. They just love going to find them. But where we have mentors who don't have pat and easy solutions for every quandary that may arise in the course of a semester or a year. But they love the wrestling and the seeking that comes with that full-orbed Christian life that says that the life of the mind and the life of the heart, the life of the calling and, and the life of recreation are all united under the Lordship of Jesus Christ. And therefore, we can discover those glories, those majesties together. The, the, uh, the most overquoted quote that I quote with uh, much quotidian uh, ferocity is uh, Abraham Kuyper's great declaration about the unity of all knowledge. He said, there's not one square inch in the whole domain of human existence over which Christ, who is sovereign over all, does not say, mine. At FCS, what we really believe is that the way we dress, the way we think, the way we act, the way we speak, the way we write, the way we compute, the way we spend, and the way we give is all under the authority of the Lord Jesus who says, this is mine. That, I think, is what really sets SES apart. These remarkable mentors who are willing to actually say, I don't know, but I will find out. And let me tell you, I'll have so much fun finding out that that will probably be our lesson for next week. Welcome to a learning community where the Lordship of the Lord Jesus Christ is our lone star, our north star. And where the task of discipleship means that all of us have entered in to that great and wonderful journey of learning together. Moms and dads, I hope you're ready for long discussions over the dinner table about why George Washington was not the first president of the United States. I hope you are ready for a long discussion about why it was that, uh, that Newton climbed down that uh, drain pipe in Trinity College in order to do experiments on his own eyeball in order to discover uh, the marvels of human optics. I hope you're ready to enter in to a great adventure. God bless you and welcome.